Welcome, and thank you for listening in on today's webinar. Leading today's economic update is Danielle Marceau, Senior Economist here at Prevedere. Danielle, we look forward to your insights, and thank you for joining us. Thanks, Chrissy. So today I want to talk about the lasting impact that COVID-19 has had on many small businesses and potentially will have in the future. So we focused a lot of these webinars and these updates on the consumer, the labor market, their ability to spend. But today I want to take a deeper dive and take a look at some of what is driving the major shifts that we're seeing in the lackluster labor market and really focus in on some of those small business trends that are developing. So just to set the stage in the context of where are we in the midst of this global pandemic? So once again, we've started to see a general increase in the number of new cases on a global scale. We were seeing things stall out late this summer, uh, but in most recent weeks, uh, we've started to see a increase again in the number of new cases. Specifically in the United States, focusing on that, we really are truly seeing a third wave. We, it is underway here in the United States. We're seeing new cases on the rise in the majority of the states here. This third wave is definitely adding major headwinds as we head into 2021. The longer this pandemic takes to shake out, the longer and the longer time it takes for us to be able to rein in the number of new cases and truly open up our economy again, it's likely that the recession is going to be that much deeper and take that much longer to recover. So this third wave is definitely giving us um, some headwinds for economic growth as we head into 2021. So I want to talk now and really shift focus to some of the effects that we've already seen of, from COVID-19 on many, many small businesses. So from data from the third quarter, Yelp Economic Impact Report had some interesting findings. So what we're seeing is that total business closures have started to increase again. So what you're looking at here is showing the top line is of all the businesses on Yelp um, versus the number of them that were open in March of this year, on March 1st of this year, uh, the top line is how many of those are now closed or were closed at each point on this chart. So we saw, we're beginning to see um, a decline in the number of businesses that were closed due to Yelp, but we've actually started beginning around the July timeframe, uh, those number of closures to start to eke up again. The bigger and more concerning thing here is that there are more permanent business closures since the beginning of this pandemic than there were temporary business closures. And you can see that by the, the red line and the green line here. We saw those converge in July. And now we can see that the, of all of the businesses that are closed compared to March 1st of this year, which at the end of the third quarter was 163,000. We can see that 97,000 of those, almost 98, are permanently closed. We're definitely seeing some major impact on businesses and that's rippling its way through the labor market. We've talked a lot about the labor market, the structural shifts that we're seeing go on. Um, we've actually seen in the most recent report that temporary layoffs and permanent layoffs are sort of converging. But we're no longer seeing a higher number of temporary layoffs. A lot of those have now converted to permanent. And a good portion of the reason is because of this trend that is happening. This businesses that have permanently shuttered their doors, those are some jobs that are permanently lost. This is giving us our first signs and confirmation of what we've been talking about here at Prevedere for a while. And that's that the COVID pandemic, you know, we're looking at this data that is suggesting that this is shifting from a major short-term economic shock to this widespread event with lasting economic impact. It's really gonna result in a, a long recovery ahead of us 
that's likely to be um, very slow as we're seeing these major structural shifts. Additionally, focusing in just on some more uh, retail type stores, focusing on just on businesses that have a brick and mortar front. Um, what you're seeing here is just sort of a second source confirming some of that data that we saw coming from the Yelp data. And that is showing, this is a index with respect to pre-COVID, a pre-COVID baseline, the percent of brick and mortar stores that are open. So it's negative. That tells us that there's a lower percentage of stores open. Um, the dotted line is specific retail. The black line is all businesses with a brick and mortar front. And what you can see is that we did see a pretty robust increase in May, June, early summertime as the economy started to open up again. But we've really seen over the last quarter that that line for all businesses has kind of stalled out. It's really just hovered right there around that 20% mark. Um, we're not really seeing any additional uh, recovery of any stores beyond this, you know, down 20% from pre-COVID that are opening their doors again. Um, there could be some that are just deciding to stay closed until the virus um, subsides. It'll have to be pretty strong financially in order to be able to weather this. You know, this could be um, some things that we're looking at is this giving a little bit of an in potential indication that um, that 20% mark could be the number. Um, you know, we could have seen in initial analysis is suggesting that that 20% drop in the number of bu businesses open could be more of that permanent shock. Um, so we're definitely seeing this long term. We're now six months into this pandemic. And really, this is telling us that that's a lot of jobs. 20% less businesses, that's a lot of jobs that just aren't there anymore or aren't there now, um, or at least will not be there until this health pandemic subsides. And the third wave is telling us that that's not likely to happen anytime soon. So these, this is two, of, uh, two charts, two different data sources that are really kind of confirming that a lot of those temporary loss of jobs that we had expected at the very beginning of this pandemic to just be temporary are really starting to see that shift into permanent. Taking a look um, at some of the commercial filings for bankruptcies data is also supporting this. We're seeing that um, businesses filing for bankruptcy, commercial businesses was up 48.9% in the third quarter of 2020 versus the third quarter of 2019. Or the, yes, the third quarter of 2019. Uh, most of these are small businesses that really don't have a lot of access to capital. We actually saw the number of bankruptcies really accelerate in September. It was up about 78.7% .7 from last year. You know, without the Paycheck Protection Program that many of that ran out for many businesses around the September timeframe, we expect to see a little bit more here in these bankruptcies. Just a third data point that really is suggesting um, a, a permanent loss in jobs as not a surprise. We've been talking about that here at Previdary uh, for a while now that we do think that this is really a lasting economic impact. Um, and here's some of the data to support that. We've also, a lot of this is in retailers. Just wanted to kind of point that out. This has started to really accelerate a trend that was really underway already in the shifting, because of shifting consumer preferences around retail. So just wanted to show these charts to kind of talk a little bit more to the business side of things. I've tied it to the labor market here, talking a lot about permanent job losses, but we also need to think about it in the context of what this means for other businesses. There's a whole side of the economy that's not directly uh, related to consumer spending and consumer demand, but there's the B2B businesses out there, businesses who sell to other businesses, um, sell into these small businesses. If there's a lower number of small businesses out there, we can expect uh, B2B businesses who are depending upon that demand from other 
um, corporations and businesses to also take a hit. So this is going to hit both sides of the coin. Uh, it's going to hit business and the labor market as well. So this is one of the key things as to why uh, here at Prevedary we do see this recession, recession continuing, um, being long and drawn out, and even by the end of 2021, we do not expect to be fully recovered from this COVID-19 health pandemic. But we can't end on a, um, a negative note, right? So we are seeing a lot of job losses from corporations and businesses, but the American consumer is out there and the entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well. So interesting, we've actually seen new business applications in the United States skyrocket. Um, this is unprecedented. Even if you look back at the past recession, uh, we did not see, even coming out of that recession, a, the same spike year over year in the number of new business applications out there. So American workers, they're looking for other ways to earn a living rather than just their traditional jobs. I think this is also interesting. This is something that we want to keep a pulse on here. Um, how does this have the potential to disrupt this economic recovery? How is this going to be a little bit different than past economic recoveries as consumers are out there uh, creating their own jobs through creating their own businesses, um, innovating and providing products and services that we're not really in demand pre-pandemic without stay-at-home orders or other regulations there wasn't the same level of uh, the same demand for the same type of products and so it's really going to be a bit of a shift in the market for businesses as well just understanding how what types of businesses are in demand and how americans are striving to meet those business needs so in summary, the data is clearly saying that the negative impact from this health pandemic is not a quick shock with a immediate rebound. This is going to last through at least 2021 from an economic perspective. We're definitely facing some headwinds with a long road to recovery. Uh, businesses are closing their doors. We're seeing a lot of them shut down. And even at an accelerating pace, especially as a lot of the stimulus and su government support that was out there starts to subside, we're definitely seeing that this is not only a, a structural shift in the unemployment market, and as this directly relates to in the number of people employed and jobs that are correlated to the number of businesses out there, but also thinking about it on the impact to other businesses and the demand for their services as well. So this is definitely going to be impacting our potential for economic growth during the next four to six quarters. Thank you, Danielle, for the great insights. It's clear from our weekly economic updates that we are in a time of unprecedented uncertainty and volatility. As businesses head into the 2021 planning cycle, I want to remind everyone listening in of Prevedary's economic scenario planning solution. The insights from scenario modeling can improve strategic, financial, and operational plans for 2021 and beyond. You can learn more about the solution by visiting the web address on your screen. And that concludes today's economic update. If you have any questions for Danielle, please contact us using the contact information on the screen and stay tuned for follow-up presentations. Thank you.